This time on Film Ranker, we are looking at J.J. Abrams. While he got his start as the creator of some of the biggest TV shows in the past 20 years, in the last decade, Abrams has been focusing mostly on film, including directing entries of some of the biggest franchises of all time time. And despite his name seemingly being everywhere, he has actually only directed six films. He only produced Cloverfield, which is more than enough for a countdown. So let's get to it. Number six, Star Trek Into Darkness. Abrams has yet to direct a truly bad film, but every list needs a bottom entry. And here that is the second movie of the modern Star Trek franchise. While it still shares a lot of the strengths from the first, the great cast, the sleek style, high octane action sequences, it does more than a few things wrong, including spending way too much time on the ship and pushing too many of the characters to the sidelines. The biggest mistake, however, is retreading the ground of what is probably the most beloved film in the whole franchise but without any of the heart that made Wrath of Khan work so well. Number five, Star Wars Rise of Skywalker. Abrams found himself in a tough spot with the ninth numbered Star Wars. He had to create a final entry of what is arguably the most beloved franchise ever with only a fraction of the usual lead up time and following the most divisive entry in the series, a movie that basically ignored or retconned his own first movie in the series. What came out of all this is a movie that feels both rushed and a little bit like it has to tell the meat of two movies in one. To Abrams credit, this film does get back to the series' fun, galaxy-hopping ways, and there are some really great bits. The Death Star Ruins, for example. It is certainly a lot messier than most would like, and many fairly call it fan service. But as a fan, I did feel more or less served under the circumstances. Number 4. Mission Impossible 3 while Rise of Skywalker followed a divisive film, Mission Impossible 3 had to follow one that was all but universally panned. If this had failed, the ship would have gone down. But Abrams breathed new life into the franchise with a movie that both returned to its roots and pushed things forward. MI3 has some great additions to the cast. Hello, Simon Pegg and Maggie Q. And some terrific action like the base jumping sequence that would push the franchise to go bigger and bigger. It also brings humanity to the lead character while playing with the tropes of the genre. Who else expected that final scene to end with an On Her Majesty's Secret Service style surprise? Number three, Super 8. To date, this is the only J.J. Abrams directed film that isn't playing with someone else's toys. Although, to be fair, it is certainly Steven Spielberg adjacent. Watch today, Super 8 feels like both an homage to Stand By Me and the Goonies and the necessary precursor to Stranger Things. It's one of those terrific movies that can only come out in the summer that does as good a job with its coming-of-age characters as it does balancing the giant mystery that they're all wrapped up in. It's a love letter to JJ's faves as a kid, and it works, partly because those are also our faves, and partly because it's more than strong enough to stand on its own two feet. Number two, Star Trek. It takes some real testicular fortitude to reboot, even if I know it's not really a reboot, the franchise with probably the most dedicated fan base of them all. It is no small miracle that Abrams managed to not just appease the longtime fans, but do it in a way that brought all kinds of new fans to the franchise. The new cast is a bit buffer, the new ship is a bit slicker, the effects are a lot more lens flarier, but at its heart, this feels like Star Trek. Everyone might be a few degrees more badass with retractable swords and ice cave sidekicks, but they're all recognizable and they're all having a heck of a lot of fun. Number one, Star Wars The Force Awakens. 
As we have established, Abrams is not one to back away from taking on tricky directing jobs, but taking the reins of Star Wars following the mixed response to the prequels and the complicated feelings about the move to Disney, to put both things very lightly, was a job fraught with peril, but J.J. pulled it off. He takes the blueprints of what made the original such classics and then lays on fresh characters and relationships and twists, and it works. Force Awakens is the first film since Return of the Jedi that felt like classic Star Wars. It is Saturday matinee action at its most space swashbuckly. The new cast is terrific. The old cast is used just the right amount and in the right ways, and the heart of Star Wars is pasted all over every inch of this terrific film. And that is it. I understand how much people care about these movies because I am one of them. So I know that there are going to be some dissenting opinions and that's great. Please share your own lists and please do like and subscribe and hopefully I will see you all next time.